Hello everybody, my name is Jonathan Quissis, and today I want to teach you about the merge sort. Now the merge sort is a sorting algorithm that splits an array down to single points all the way down recursively and then combines each portion of the array until the sorted array is returned. So today let's start with a um, some helper methods. Um, I will define a uh, let's see, uh, private static void print array method. And of course, this method will print our array. Take one parameter there, and then for integer i in array, we're all we're going to do is going to print out i on a single line with a space. And then outside of that, we will call sys out. So that is our one helper method. Now for the merge sort algorithm, we'll have two methods. Uh, one method we will call in our uh, main method, and it'll be called recursively inside itself. And then our second method will be the merge method, which will also be called recursively. So let us start. We'll define private static, and it's going to return an integer array, and it's going to be called merge sort. And it's going to take one parameter, which is the initial array. Now, since we're doing this recursively, we need a recursive control uh, if statement. So if the length of the array is less than or equal to one, we want to return that array. If I can spell array correctly. Else, if that is not the case, we need to define the left side of the array and the right side of an array. So we will go int, oops, oh dear, what have I done? Okay, we will go integer array left equals a new integer array of size midpoint. Now what is midpoint? Midpoint will be defined up here. It is the midpoint of the initial array passed. So we'll go into midpoint equals array dot length divided by two. Now we'll define the right array equals new int midpoint. Now what is the problem here? Uh, we'll have two arrays of the same length. Now what if midpoint array dot length divide by two if the length of the initial array here is not um, an even number. We'll have uneven left and right integer arrays. So what we need to do, we need to declare int right array there, and then we need an if statement. If the array dot length modulus two equals zero. So if it can be divided by two, we want the integer array right to be initialized to a new integer array of midpoint. So that will work. If this is not the case, we want the integer, oh wait, we don't need that because we already declared it up there. Um, right equals new integer array midpoint plus one. Now this plus one will make the difference. So for example, if I have an array of five, four, three, two, one, that is an array size or array length of five. So if we take int, uh, integer array left equals new int midpoint, midpoint five divided by two would be what? It would be two. So it would take zero and one. So that's an integer length array of two for left. The right array would be three, would be three, two, one. And so we'll do that. So now we need to populate the left and right array. So to do that, we'll define a for loop. i is less than midpoint, i plus plus. Now this will populate the left array. So we'll go left i equals array i. Straightforward, that populates the left array. Now for the right array, we need to do something a little different. So we'll go int j equals zero. j is less than right dot length, and then j plus plus. 
Now, the problem we run into here is if we do the same thing from left eye equals array eye, or in this case it would be right eye equals array, or right j equals array j, <laughs> we'll run into an issue because j, or j will start at zero, but right will start at zero, that'll be fine, but array j will start at zero and will be an exact copy of left eye. So what we need to do is go right right j, that's fine, equals array midpoint plus j. This is to ensure that the right array will be initialized with correct values. So now that we have populated both our left and right arrays, what we need to do is declare a new integer array called results, and this will contain our new integer array. So it'll be of size array.length. Now, this is going to be the interesting part. This is the recursive part of the algorithm. So we need to define left is going to equal merge sort left. So why, oops, <laughs> why does this happen? Well, for example, in our, in our example of five, four, three, two, one, um, left array currently will be five and four. Five and four will be passed into merge sort, which I'll come back up here. Five and four is not array.length less than or equal to one, so we skip that. Midpoint is equal to one. Left would be one. Right, um, array.length modulus two equals zero. That would be correct. Right would be set to this point. And then for int i equals zero, we'd populate the left and the right array from midpoint. Since midpoint is one, we only have one element in the left array and one element in the right array. And then we do this again, and then we call left again, comes back up here, and oh wait, array.length is less than or equal to one, we return that array. Then it comes back down here, and then we'll do the same thing for the right array. Once those two are complete, we need to get the result array. Now I'm going to stop this method right here. And now we are going to create a new method, private static int array. It's going to be called merge. And it's going to merge both the left and the right array. So to do that, we'll go int array left and int array right. Now before we do that, we need to declare some variables. We need a new result array, which will be returned and be stored up here. So what we'll do is go int array result equals new int array of what? Left dot length plus right dot length. Why is this? Well, right here, we can safely say that we're going to do merge left and right. So the resulting array has to be equal to the length of left plus the length of right. So that's why we do this down here. Now we need a few more variables. So we need to declare a few integer variables and the, these are pointers for each integer array. So we're gonna have a left pointer and a right pointer and a result pointer. And they are going to be initialized to zero. Pointer equals right, pointer equals result, pointer equals zero. Now, here comes the fun part. We want to say while there are while there are elements in both, or let's say, while there are elements in either the left array or the right array, because we want to merge those together. If there are none, we do not want to merge those together. So to declare that, we'll go while the left pointer is less than left.length or the right pointer is less than right.length. So this will ensure that we will have something to merge. So now I need an if statement. We're going to have three if or if else statements. The first one will be if there are elements in the left and the right array. So for example, if we had uh, four and five in this array, and then if we had six and seven in this array, 
we would want to run that block of code. So let's define that right here. So if we have left, left pointer, oops, I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> we would go left pointer is less than left dot length and the right pointer is less than right dot length. This is similar to the one above, but we are checking if both the left and the right arrays have elements in them. That is very important. Okay. Now, if both the left array and the right array have elements in them, we need to compare the left array with the right array. If the left left pointer, if the element in the left array at left pointer is less than the right element with the right pointer in the right array, we want to set the result result pointer to left left pointer. So we want to set the item in the left array with left pointer index to the result array with the result pointer. Now, once we do that, we want to increment both the result pointer and the left pointer. That is very important. Now, we need an else statement, because if this is not true, then obviously the right element in right right pointer is less than left. So we go result, result pointer plus plus equals right right pointer plus plus. Now this block of code is really important. This states that if there are elements in both the left and right of arrays. Now we move on from this block of code to an else if statement if there are only elements in the left array. And that is defined like this. If left pointer is less than left.length. And I keep messing up. <laughs> then obviously we want the results with result pointer incremented equal to left left pointer. That's all to that block of code. This block of code, once again, to reiterate, if there are only elements in the left array, then you take the element in the left array and assign it to the result with result pointer, and then you both increment the result pointer and the left pointer. Now we have one more thing to do here. Else if there are elements only in the right array. If there are only elements in the right array, we want to assign those elements to the result array. So we go right pointer is less than right dot length. Result, result pointer increment equals right right pointer. And of course you would like to, you would want to spell it right. <laughs> now that is it for the merge method. Now we come up here. Once this is all done, we of course need to return the result array. Uh, did I do that right? Yes, I did. Okay. Which will return the merged left and right. And then Finally, we need to return the result. Now, all we have to do is declare our main method. So we need an integer array to sort. So we will just go like this, array equals, and just to make it simple, five, four, three, two, one. Um, and then we will call our helper method print array to see the initial array. 
and I will add a sys out here to help us out. Initial array. And then down here, we will call array equals merge sort. And then you pass in the initial array. Once again, sys out sorted array. And then you go print array array. And that is it. Once we run it, we will see the result down here. Initial array, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the sorted array, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, since this is the merge sort, um, if you would like more about this, I highly recommend you understand the concept of merge sort before you even start or even think of coding merge sort. Once you understand the concept of the merge sort algorithm, it becomes that much easier to learn how to code it. So once again, um, I'll just walk you through this. So down here, main, once we run this, main is called, sets an integer array to 54321, prints out to the console initial array, and then prints the array. Now it sets the initial array to merge sort, passed with the initial array. We come up to merge sort called here. If the array.length is less than or equal to one, it is not, we skip that. Sets the midpoint, we set the left and right arrays. The right array is a special case where we have to define if the array.length is an even number, we set it to a new int midpoint right here. Else it is new int midpoint plus one. We then populate the array right here with the items from array. We set a new integer array result, which we will be returning. We will call a recursive call to the merge sort algorithm or merge sort method on left and right. And these will return, once again, if you recall, if array.length is less than or equal to one. Once they are returned, they are passed into the merge method, left and right. In the merge method, we initialize a new result array that we will return. We initialize left pointer, right pointer, and result pointer to zero. Now we do a while loop. While there are elements in either the left array or the right array, if there are elements in both the left array and a right array, we need to find out which one is the smallest. That is defined here. Else, if there are only elements in the left array, this code runs. If there are only elements in the right array, this code runs. Now, there is one very important thing that you have to understand. You have to increment the pointers when they are used. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Otherwise, you'll get some pretty funky results. So once again, it returns that merge sort array, prints out the sorted array, and then finally prints the array from our helper method print array. So I hope you find this useful. My name is Jonathan Quissis, and I'll see you once again later. Take care. Bye-bye.